Sorry about that. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Off to a great start indeed. You can hear it now, right? Okay, good. What if he was telling the secret to be happy? I mean, I'd like to know it myself, to be honest with you. But, I don't know. I don't think there is a secret to happiness. I think, instead of searching for happiness, we should search for comfort instead. Finding a normal that we can be with. Moving from one normal to another in life, and finding comfort with each of those. Wise words to start the day. Wise words which I call my own. So a little bit braggadocious. But anyway, hello once again. Birdie, nice to see you here. How are you doing? Bokraj, as I was saying before I was muted, first of all, nice to see you. But yes, I stream every Tuesday, 2 p.m. EDT. Um, unless I say otherwise. But I always announce it on my Discord whenever I go live. I should announce it on my Blue Sky or whatever, but I fail to. In fact, let me do that as I talk. Pardon me. Um, where's the link? Also, we got some Vaporwave playing today. Hopefully royalty free, because last time when I was streaming that supposedly royalty free jazz music, uh, I got a copyright claim for it for two songs, which is bullshit. One second. There we go. A blue sky post. I barely use my blue sky for anything. But, you know, if you want to be on blue sky, if you want to join another social network, uh, it's, I think it's available to, uh, open to everyone right now. Or you can join Donald Trump's social media thing, uh, which, according to them, has 45 million users, which is complete bullshit. But yes, hello. Roman Ellis, hello. How are you doing? Fancy chat widget we have indeed. Enjoy. I can change its colors and everything. Um, and I realize that we actually have two chat widgets on the screen. This is going great. Uh, how do I get rid of that? God, we're really working on the fly. I had everything set up for my baking stream. I have a slightly different setup for that. Um... So, yeah, clearly there's some conflict here. Let me see if I can get rid of this. There we go. That should be good. Yeah, there we go. Not too bad. Jacon, my dear admin slash mod, how are you doing today? If this was April 1st, you could say, and today I announced my nomination for POTUS. Yeah, and like I said, unfortunately, I will never be eligible. You have to have been born in the US for it. Not that I would have gotten any far with it, you know. Be they, Well, actually, you know, even if I could run for president, Americans just wouldn't trust anyone with a British accent. They've seen too many movies where the British person is a villain. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with casting British actors as the villains. After all, history has taught us that the British aren't necessarily to be trusted, but, you know, that kind of media, that kind of representation, it does have a bit of a negative effect. But then again, in real life, you know, I've not really had that much in a way of bad treatment because of my accent in America. In fact, in many ways, it's worked to my favor. <clears throat> you know, it's like, oh, he's, he's British, he must be telling the truth. Tumi, hello, how goes the streaming game for you? And yes, a wee upgrade for the chat widget. Hopefully it works out. It should have like special member alerts as well and all that kind of stuff and uh, whatchamacallit, super chats. So if any of you fancies trying that out, see how that goes. God, that sounds like I'm begging. I mean, I kind of am. I mean, all of YouTube and streaming is just begging people for support, really. <clears throat> Agree, happiness is an emotion and not a state of being. Absolutely, yeah. It's, uh, you know, one of those things that I think we place a little bit too much value on as something that we should strive towards. I mean, happiness is a good thing, but I think 
you know, one thing that I think I've learned throughout life is that, like, when it comes to happiness, it's not necessarily a state of mind. It is just, like, an emotion that comes and goes. But I think a lot of us have this, like, idea in our head that it is this, like, ongoing, consistent thing that will be present in your life at all times and it can never dissipate in any kind of way that once you've achieved it the only thing that could possibly interrupt it is like life's tragedies like losing someone or something like that but no it's all just about comfort being okay with who you are where you are there's some form of comfort to be found in every situation that you're in but of course it becomes harder in particular ones you know if you're in like a war-torn country or something it's easier said than done can't be comfortable when your life's at risk all the time that's for sure i have to add yet another page to this comic chapter and then i will definitely totally will be done so i'll be working on that while i watch oh godspeed with it Solar is sitting beneath a body tree and telling us the secrets of life 10 out of 10 stream well, you know, when you get to be as old as I am, you accrue some experience. And hopefully experience will teach me, right now, that this tea is at the perfect temperature. Five dollars from Tandy. Thank you very much, Tandy. Uh, requesting kitty footage for true happiness. Perfect timing, because Curie yeah. literally just came to sit next to me. Ah, oh, there we go. There's the alert. Uh, one second. Let me set this up. Come on, Curie. You gotta get me some engagement. Alright, let me set up my webcam for her. And here she is. The real reason why people come watch this stream. Let's see. Get that angle right. Boop. There she is. Hey. Yeah. New, 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 new. She's so precious. New, new. Me, me, me. Yeah. She's adorable. She'll probably fall asleep in a moment now. There you go. There's your kitty footage. Sumi, hello. Sorry I'm late, some technical issues. That's no problem. Just glad to have you here. How are you doing today? Sumi, I'm doing well. I now have 10 subscribers on YouTube. Lol, I'm slowly catching up to you. I mean, if there's any consolation, like, since my last video, I've lost, like, nearly 500 subs. No idea what's happening there, but it is what it is, I guess. Life itself is begging for support. There is a truth to that, yeah. Begging and often failing. Google already knew my credit card info. I don't know if I should be concerned, but it's worth it for the kitty. Yeah, I think you have to... I mean, you have to manually add it on there. I know that. Um, but I don't know. It might be like identification purposes. Yuri can indeed. A model. Curie could be a model. She is very docile. Uh, like, whenever we take her to the vet, she is... Always very calm, she doesn't lash out or anything like that. She's a wonderful cat. She could have been on cat food bags. I mean, she probably still could, she's pretty young. She's like six, I think. Baby girl. <laughs> That's what my wife calls her, actually. Stop showing your ass to the public. I had a stressful day recorded with a different YouTuber, first collab ever. Audio got clipped beyond control, had to re-record. Re-recording is awful, yes. I mean, I've... You know, my videos usually take about... Let's say, like, if it's a 40-minute video or something like that, that can take about, like, an hour to an hour and... 20 to 30 minutes, depending off this whether there's any mishaps. And sometimes, like, if I have to shoot a video on my own, own, like, if my wife is out, for example, then sometimes I can end up, like, messing up the focus on it. And that can result in me going through this entire video, and it turns out that it's useless. 
Um, I would use autofocus, but unfortunately with my camera and quite a few different cameras, autofocus is weird because it will keep trying to autofocus as it's going through. So you'll see it like blur in and out and it's really annoying. So I have to manual focus it. I have an app for it as well that it connects to, but it's a little bit finicky. Um, and you know, I use my phone as a teleprompter as well. So yeah, probably should come up with a different solution. It was a one hour, five minute clip wasted. Oof. Was it scripted or um, improvised? Be right back, need to do something real quick. Hopefully it's an easy thing. Camera focusing can be a pain. Yes, it's, yeah, I don't know what it is. You think it'd be better by now. Especially since like, you know, I'm not really moving around. Like it's me just sitting there. Semi-scripted. Okay, that's not too bad then. I mean, you know, when you have a second take, you might come up with something better. Not to say that what you had was bad, but you know, sometimes like if you put in like any jokes or anything like that, it can, you know, usually have something a bit more to work with. Uh, sometimes I'll throw in some like some improvised joke in, jokes in my next, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll throw like some improvised jokes that I come in, come up with as I'm going through the script. My next video though, has like one joke in it. And that's because it gets like really serious. So it was at the point where I was like, ah, oh, I can't really joke here. But I got one in there. The original chemistry was definitely better. The second take was more controlled. Okay, no, there you go. Chemistry probably suffers a little bit just because, you know, you're a bit tired at that point. I love you. Don't tell my wife. She's right here, actually. She just came back home for physical therapy. Say hi to the people. You want to wave your hand? What? You can put things down if your hands are full. That's the nice thing about tables. You can put things on them. Here we go. That is the entry point right here. If you don't want to show no more than your hand. Oh, and there's Kiri. Yeah, she's stroking Kiri instead. Perfect temperature. Oh no, a serious video. Oh no, indeed. Yeah, it's a... Bit of a... Oh, she left. Now there is an empty stool where she once lay. You're gonna try and get her back. Yuri! Come on. Come on. Am I gonna have to bribe you with treats? Oh, well, well, there she is, just in the distance now. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, the next video is... Oh, there, there she goes. Fine. It's going in the bedroom. But yeah, the next video, I think I mentioned it previously, uh, it's going to be about sexism in South Korea because it's one of those things where it's like a lot of ideas that I come up with are just stuff that I like come upon in like an article or something like that and I end up just digging deeper into it see if there's like anything like any more meat to it uh, and yeah sexism in South Korea is a huge problem like it is way worse than I anticipated it would be um, and the reason like, why it started out was actually because, um, the game Stellar Blade is coming out and that's like m one, probably the biggest, uh, like triple A console release coming out from South Korea. And I saw like a interview with the director of the game, <clears throat> uh, Hyung Tae Kim. And he was talking about the design of the character. Now, if you haven't seen the design of the lead character in it, um, let me just pull it up real quick. Just for context. Okay. 
So here's the image search. <clears throat> yeah, so here's Eve from the game. Um, yeah, she's in a impossibly vacuum packed skin tight suit. Um, all that kind of stuff. And you know, when it comes to character designs in this day and age, you've noticed there's like being a bit of a veering away from like overtly sexualized characters. So to see something like this now is kind of unusual, especially in such uh, prestige game, you know, it's a $70 box game. Um, but in this interview, uh, Hyung Tae Kim was talking about her design and he said that like they paid special attention to her backside because that is the thing that people will be seeing the most of. And basically it was just saying, I want something nice to look at while I'm playing a game. Uh, now obviously, it's a very conventionally attractive design. She's very thin. Uh, there's some jiggle there as well, because of course the fucking is. Um, it's all laid out, really. Of like, this is a character that is designed to offer some form of titillation. And that interview of him saying, like, um, you know, this is something that's made to be visually appealing um, and not necessarily just as a overall design, it got me thinking, like, you know, what else is there here? Like, you know, what is it to this design sensibility that might say something else about South Korea as a country and their norms? And it turns out there was a lot to it. Um, you know, the studio that makes this game, Shift Up, um, they created the game, uh, the mobile game, Goddess of Victory Nikkei. And that is also another game where it's like, I mean, the Goddess of Victory Nikkei, if you know anything about it, it's way worse in terms of sexualization. It's one of those like anime games where like the anime mobile games where like the characters are like sexualized to hell. Like the main selling point or the unique selling point is the characters have like very overt but jiggle physics whenever they fire guns. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, but yeah, outside of that, there were just like other issues inside South Korea, like uh, the treatment of women, like generally they're seen as like second class citizens. They're not very well represented in the government. They're um, obviously not very prominent within video games industry when it comes to the development side, even though um, I think it's 42% of overall gamers in South Korea are women. But there's like, I guess the way to describe the tone of like men in South Korea, uh, it's like if Gamergate was really successful basically. So women in South Korea, like there's been the Me Too movement, which has generally been very successful there. Um, and there's been like a lot of people actually Spe a lot of women speaking out against these issues where generally it was told like to be a culture of silence um, and as a result you have opposition to the point where even their most uh, recent president uh, I can't remember his full name I know his first name is Yoon um, but uh, his yeah like the president basically campaigned on a platform of dealing with feminists, basically, dealing with misandry. Um, and it's pretty grotesque. He barely won the election, but he won nonetheless. And he wants to uh, abolish the Ministry of Gender Equality and Family, which for a long time people have accused that ministry of basically forwarding the interests of women above all else, which is complete nonsense. But yeah, there's, there's a lot to it. So like I start off with the talk of Stellar Blade and the game industry and the stuff that's happened in there. But because the subject was like so rich in detail and there was so many issues that were like some, well, this, like this, the game thing was just like something that was orbiting all these issues as opposed to it being uh, just a singular incident. So yeah, it, yeah, it ballooned really. It's not a super long video, but it is an interesting approach, if I'd say so myself, where I talk about this singular issue and then it just becomes like all these other things. Kind of feel like I'm baiting people in a way, like here's this video about gaming, but 
Here we are now talking about uh, the treatment of women in South Korea as a whole, how they're treated like shit in the workplace, all that kind of stuff. Fun stuff. You can already see what some people are going to say about the design. Yeah, it's uh, some people are already saying things. None of those outfits are even good. I mean, they're okay, you know. I don't think they're necessarily, like, offensive or anything, but there's better stuff out there. She does have a lot of alternate outfits that I've seen, and those don't look too bad. And you know the thing I hate the most? Is that, like, not because of a design or anything, is, like, this is the kind of game that I like. Like, Nier Automata, Bayonetta, etc. Sort of within that field. So, like, it's like, ugh, I want to play it, but... You know... The male gaze is weird. It is indeed, yeah. It's uh, practically inescapable. It's a bit bleak to think about, but it is inescapable in its way because, you know, you could even argue that um, the stuff that women make and, well, just anyone that isn't a man is informed by the male gaze in some way because the male gaze has been so prominent throughout history that it has some influence on other genders as well. Uh, so it's kind of all-encompassing. I don't like thinking about it that way, because it is kind of a bleak thought that, like, you know, even other genders do include some form of the male gaze in their work. Hard to say, really. I remember seeing teasers for this game when it was announced. I referred to it as the butt game to my partner. Yeah, it's taken over Nier Automata now. Also, hello, KZD. How are you doing? Korean designs have been uh, questionable since Ragnarok Online days. I feel like there's nothing to it. Has, nothing has been as popular as that game. Yeah, I bring up like other designs within it as well. Like um, I don't reference it directly, but I include like a clip or Lost Ark, for example, <clears throat> which um, you know, it basically just like talking about like, how there's um, you know this standard, I guess, um, where there's not much in a way of variety of body types in it. And, you know, that directly links into South Korea's beauty standards, which are horribly high, like horribly high, and can have a profound effect on a woman's life if they're not to abide by them. Like, really awful. Like, there's employers out there for, like, office jobs that will ask for a woman's measurements, their height, um, their... They'll ask for, like, a full body photo and everything um, just to get, like, a job as a bank clerk or something. Yes, Curie's back. Hello. Oh. I had a feeling she was going to swipe at me there. She does that. Sounds like an interesting topic. I hope it is, yeah. Like I say, it's a little bit different from what I've been doing recently. Uh, but, you know, that's generally, I think, where my better videos come from, when it's like something that I find that I sort of like fall down a rabbit hole with. Um, you know, that's the kind of thing that I enjoy putting together, where it's like you start with a seed, but it grows much larger than you anticipated that it would. At the moment, the government is really glorifying K-pop in the West, but a lot of Westerners have no clue how unsafe it is for women to go there alone. Yeah, it's uh, K-pop does get its moment in the video as well. I don't put too much in there just because, you know, I've done a video on K-pop in the past. I really don't want to aggravate K-pop fans that much because that has happened with that last video I made, and it took a significant mental toll. So, the like main thing that I bring up there is the um treatment of um forget a full name but it's a uh, Won Young. Um where there was like this weird I would talk about like a double standard and this is thanks to Sumi actually. She's been very helpful on this thing. Uh but like there's a I brought up like a double standard of how there's this male singer called Heechul 
who has like these horrible misogynist views and he never like had to uh basically take accountability for it it just offered like a backhanded sorry but then you have like a singer like Jan Won, I think it's Jan Won Young, uh, who, like, she ended up getting shit for just like the way that she ate a strawberry. Like, she ate it with two hands, and then some like people are dumping on her for it. And then there were like these two members of this band, Alice, who like they did just like a meme of her. Like, where they ate a strawberry with two hands, and then everyone started saying, like, oh, you be mean. Um, and then they had to apologize for it. It's absurd, like, it is a completely absurd world. Like, yeah, it's... <laughs> the world of K-pop is, like, heavily informed by its fans and the fans' behavior. And no offense to any of you who are into K-pop, but I am sure that you're very well aware of this. There is a ton of irrational behavior among the K-pop fandom, and... I don't know. It's just... It's... Yeah. I don't even know what to say about it. It's like what H-Bomber guy does too. That's true, yeah, he definitely is someone that falls down a rabbit hole. Difference is, is that I don't have the privilege of releasing one video a year. I wish I did. But you know, he does make fantastic work. Although I will admit, I've still not seen his most recent video. I just don't have four hours spare. If you're baiting, then you must be a master. Ha 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 ha. K-pop in general is a really nasty job, like how the groups are set up slash etc. is so problematic and abusive. Yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's... The industry is a mess, definitely. Like I said, I spoke about it before. And even then, some people were like... The one thing that annoyed me the most with that K-pop video that I made, and the people that, like, you know, didn't take kindly to it, was the fact that there were so many people saying, like, yeah, but what about the Western music industry? That's not bad, too. Sorry, that's terrible, too. I'm like, yes, it is, but this video isn't about the Western industry. Like, it's that... Stuff like that is a really harmful deflection. You know, it's saying, like, don't pay attention to this bad thing, because there's this other bad thing that exists in the world. Um, like, yeah, they're both terrible. Like, by not mentioning one thing, it doesn't mean that it's an endorsement of it. It's simple as that, really. Even in queer circles as a male gaze. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, it's everywhere. It just, just, it is ingrained in us and the way that we present our fiction and our characters and all that kind of stuff. My chat window is behaving weird. Sorry if I'm missing messages. Then again, it's less feasible for me to read out chat Because when we're on Twitch, I only had like 11, 12 viewers per stream. A little bit more in a baking stream, so I was able to read out, read out every single chat message. But sadly, I can't hear. So sorry about that. I am reading it all, though. Take your time on these things. K-pop is definitely a huge topic and complicated. It is, yeah. There's a lot of... It, it's a minefield. Um, and, you know, there are so many different accounts of different stories within the world of K-pop. And so many different bands and so many members of these bands that, yeah, it's not only easy to get lost in all that stuff, but it's a lot easy to just... Give, there's so much like conflicting information out there too that you kind of worry about like I guess misrepresenting stories and stuff like that but you know I do make sure that I try and double check things ask people about it if I'm able to like you know I mean the reason why I asked Sumi for this one is because she's very knowledgeable on K-pop I didn't want to just dive in and you know make the assumption that I can get something like this on my own. The previous K-pop video was a cause for me to join your server and maybe talk about things politely about K-pop. It is, and look where we are today. But I am glad that you did join. I remember you weren't too happy about it at first, but I'm glad we were able to talk about it.
you can't say you didn't watch the video from H-Bomb. Hey, I'm, it's better to be honest, you know? I wish I could, you know, it's just... And I know I can watch it in breaks, but, like, I generally don't like... Jacon, thank you very much for subscribing. Wait, you weren't subscribed before? My mod? My admin and my Discord? Shame. Shame this person. Sigh. But yeah, there was, um... What was I saying? I completely lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, the H-Bomb video. Yeah, um... Because with me, like, if I watch something, like, a long thing, I prefer to go from beginning to end. I don't like breaking it up. Um, which, you know, is good, I think, in a way, because you get the whole product. But at the same time, when you get something really long, uh, it's difficult to find the time commitment. So, like, for example, I watched The Irishman by Martin Scorsese, which is just shy of four hours, uh, if you don't take credits into account. And I watched that whole thing in one sitting, which... I will say that movie is way too long. But it's very good. But, uh, yeah, sitting down four hours for a YouTube video, and that's not to put down the work of H-Bomber Guy or any YouTuber that makes long videos, it's hard for me to do. Plus, you know, I have ADHD, my attention span can be awful. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I know these are just excuses, but yeah. I will one day, though. Maybe I'll just try watching it in breaks. It is weird, though, to think that, like, it's almost like an obligation to watch this video or something. I don't know. K-pop is something that fascinates me, but from a distance. It is one of those things where it's like, you know, like, for example, anime fascinates me. Like, the stuff surrounding it, the things that are normalized in it, all that kind of thing. Are there audiences that will watch it despite its problematic elements, but, you know, still enjoy it? But that's the thing with a lot of uh, media that we consume. Like, there are people out there that will argue that you shouldn't consume anything with problematic elements in it uh, from the past and the present. Uh, but that's difficult to agree with, I think, because, you know, problematic elements or anything. As long as you, you know, don't consume stuff that is, like, stuff in the present that is going out of its way to be problematic, I think it's generally fine. Like, I like a lot of old sitcoms from, like, the 2000s. Old. I like a lot of older sitcoms from the 2000s. And a lot of that shit can be problematic as fuck at times. Like, you know, one of my favorite sitcoms is 30 Rock. Uh, which, you know, is a brilliantly funny, smart comedy, um, and it still holds up to this day, but boy, are there some elements in there that have not aged well. You're on a ContraPoint slash H-Bomber route, you'll get there. <laughs> They're, like, gigantic now, they are. Uh, yes. I don't think any person in, like, the... I don't want to call it bread tube. I don't like the term bread tube, but, like, the progressive content, uh, you know, politically progressive content, um, I guess just bread tube. But, you know, I don't think there will ever be anyone that reaches the same heights that they have. Uh, yeah, that kind of is, like, their domain now. They've kind of got a... I'm remiss to say, but they do kind of like a monopoly on audiences in that respect. Um, but that's just how these things work, really. Shame, shame, shame indeed. Yes, shame on you, Jacon. Feel the eternal shame. We idolize Cassie. We absolutely do, this one. Although the other day... Uh, my wife and my friend came around, uh, and they brought that around their absolutely adorable dog, uh, which I believe was a Datsun Basset hybrid, or mix. Uh, and it was a wonderful dog. I miss having dogs around. Dogs are great. And I still have a dog in the UK as well, a Jack Russell Terrier called Patch. Miss him dearly, but is very old now. 
saw the video on breaks myself. It's a four hour commitment. Yeah, it's so long. Like four hours is, you know, like what, quarter of your day? Something like that. It's a good amount. <laughs> The Irishman could have been shorter. Yeah, it definitely could have. Like, absolutely. I have a Corgi. Did I have a poster on Discord? I don't think you did, but I want to see it. Because I love Corgis. Yes, my wife has never watched an H-Bomber Guy video. But then again, like, you know, she wasn't, like, particularly invested in the kind of content that I make before I started making it. So, you know, it's fine. In my opinion, it's a lot to ask of someone. I don't like that it's assumed a four hour plus video essay will work for everyone. Yeah, it it is, you know, it's a ton to ask of someone. And as someone who is a big fan of like, um, getting as much out there in like, I get the movie, the, na the story writing term for it is narrative economy. Being able to say as much as you can or being able to communicate as much as you can through either words or images within the shortest amount of time. And speaking of Korea, Korean cinema is excellent at narrative economy. The way that they construct their movies, whether that's like Parasite, Old Boy, or pretty much anything else by Park Chan-wook and Bong Joon-ho, uh, is delivered in such a way that it trusts the audience to put together what is happening in it. And I think that's possible when it comes to something like video essays as well. Like, it's about taking out the bloat. And it can be really hard to control. Like, you know, there's so many times where, like, I've set out and told myself, like, this is going to be a 20-minute video. Next thing you know, it's 50 minutes. Uh, but I do stick with the goal of making sure that everything is under an hour long. And the reason why I do that is because I do genuinely feel bad about asking people to commit more than an hour of their life to watching my videos. Like, it just seems like I'm asking too much. I don't like being asked, so I don't want to ask other people as well. That silly attitude affected how I worked on my own Dan comic. I must purge the puritanical Tumblr teen in my head. Yeah, there you go, it's, it's infectious, the male gaze. As someone who really enjoys the four hour video essays, it's a ridiculous notion that the internet, for the internet to expect everyone to watch it like it's a staple. Yeah, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, when Avatar came out, like people always like expect, you, you've not seen Avatar? Like, no. But then like, yeah, people would treat it as though like you're some kind of freakish outsider. Same with things like Game of Thrones, for example, like everyone expected you to watch that. Um, I didn't watch Game of Thrones. Like I watched like two episodes of it and I was like, this isn't for me. Um, and you know, as time went by, everyone started watching it. And then by the end of it, I kind of felt vindicated because it turned out that the ending was terrible. So I was like, glad I didn't get on that wagon. I do actually have a picture of that beagle that they brought around, but it does have like a their tag and it very clearly shows the owner's name and phone number. Tell you what, let me try and do a quick edit. See if that works. Can I put a marker on it? Yes, I can actually. Yeah. Hide your owner's name. Okay. Safe. Yes, this was the angel in question. Lovely dog. Oh my god. I fell in love with it very quickly. Her name was Millie. Yeah, very sweet dog. I was smitten. I think anime's problematic elements are both a cultural and a perspective case. Sure, most of it's awful, but honestly, as long as it doesn't hinder my experience, it's fine. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, a cultural thing. The norms that exist within Japan uh, obviously don't gel with the West. Um, 
in many respects. And there have been aspects of anime that has gotten better over the years. Um, like, there's not, a, there's not as much fetishization of minors in anime than there used to be. Or at the very least, like when you have high school students in them, they err towards being more adult in features compared to like what they could have been in the past. So there's been some changes, but in other changes, like, you know, overall sexualization and all that kind of stuff, it ends up being a little bit of a gray area. But, you know, so long as, like, they're not trying to be problematic, I think it's generally okay. Like, what? Well, I won't lie. Like, you know, whenever they have, like, moments in anime where it's, like, showing off, like, how physically attractive like a high schooler is or something i was like, Ugh. like i'm glad my parents aren't walking on me watching this you're british it's in your blood to love corgi that's true i think mine is even a welsh i forget the difference between them and cardigans i don't think i've ever heard of a cardigan corgi actually Beagle, yeah, Beagle, yeah, Beagle Datsun, that was it, yeah, not a Basset. As soon as she came around, she spent like 20, 25 minutes literally just sniffing every area in our apartment. Like, she wasn't even bothered the, by the fact that there was new people there. It was just like, you know, Basset hounds, they're hunter dogs, and they just wanted to sniff every single nook and cranny inside the apartment. Korean movies are amazing. Yes, they are. Yeah, Korean does make some absolutely incredible movies. Like I said, everyone's on Park, uh, sorry, Bong Joon Ho right now after Parasite, which is right, which is definitely earned. Uh, because even before Parasite, he was an incredible director. Like Mother, um, obviously like Snowpiercer, Okja, The Host. Like he hasn't made a single bad movie throughout his entire career. Gotta wait another year for his next movie, well, though, which is a painful wait. He brought up Korean cinema and immediately brought up Parasite. Well, you know, that's the main one, but I did mention other ones as well. Like, for example, in the video that I'm making, there is a brief clip of Decision to Leave as well. And in the past videos that I've made, I've brought up other movies, like, for example, um, Burning. So yes, I my oeuvre does expand beyond Parasite when it comes to Korean cinema. And I did actually make a video on Old Boy quite a while ago where I spoke about narrative economy. The video essay bloat is such a good point. H1 videos feel like they're worth the time in my opinion, but I've seen some two hour, two hour videos that could be 40 minutes in my opinion. Yeah, that's kind of like, you know, I don't mean to speak ill of creators that are releasing like 90 minute two hour videos all that kind of stuff which has become like really common now um but yeah it's without naming names there are some creators out there that could definitely stand to benefit from trimming down their essays because i don't know it's like one of those things where like you know i the way that I try and make my stuff, and this isn't me saying like, you know, I'm better at them than making things, because these people are way more successful than I am, so clearly they're doing something right that I'm not. But the way that like I look at it is like, if you want something to feel like it can hold your attention throughout the entire time, a good product doesn't feel, and that's not to say the content is bad, but like when it comes to flow, a good product in that respect shouldn't feel as long as it actually is. Like, for example, Korean filmmakers, once again, because of the use of narrative economy, a two hour movie, two hour 20, 30 movie can end up feeling like it's like 90 minutes or something. Um, like Quentin Tarantino, for example, whether you like his work or not, whether you like the person or not, he has had some very good editors 
working for his movies. Uh, Sally Menka, who was the editor from Reservoir Dogs up until Inglorious Bastards. She's an extraordinary editor, and because of her work, his movies never feel as long as they actually are. So it's that kind of pacing that you need to bear in mind. Cut out the bloat. Just all that unnecessary stuff. Leave it on the cutting room floor. And even if you do end up with a long video, <clears throat> pace it well, you know? Don't put too many pauses, all that kind of stuff. And definitely don't put filler words in as well. It bothers the hell out of me when people <clears throat> read from a script and they're leaving all of their ums and ahs. It, yeah. I know reading is difficult off a script, reading is difficult off a teleprompter. I struggle with it. <clears throat> but, you know, I cut stuff out in that respect. One sec, I need to clear my throat. I know how to mute the mic now. But yeah, like I said, I'm not crapping on their work or anything like that, you know? They do make excellent content, but pacing is a big thing for me. And I say that mostly as a person with ADHD and a, you know, very low attention span when it comes to podcasts, video essays, etc. So, yeah, I don't know. I know some people feel the same as me, though, so at least I know that. I like a nice 40-minute video essay sometimes. Yeah, to me, that's like the perfect length, you know? Not too short that it feels like it's lacking that extra bit of content that is necessary and helps create a cohesive argument, but not so long that it feels like you're just stuffing stuff in there just because it could be included. Okja is so sad, I used it. I used to be a vegetarian and I was like, maybe I should go back to that. Yeah, Okja uh, makes you feel absolutely awful for consuming meat if you are someone that eats meat. Uh, and probably makes you feel very smug if you're a vegetarian. But yeah, even like the cast that worked on that, they said by the end of it, they felt just terrible because they were still being given meat on set as part of their catering and they just felt very guilty about eating anything and some of them became vegetarians off the back of it. I live in a rural state, rural state that has a lot of livestock, pigs, cows, chickens, so I'm kind of used to it since it's just a thing that happens. But it doesn't make it any less sad. It does, yeah. Octra, well, it goes straight for the heart, that movie, when it comes to the production of meats. I prefer essays up to one hour, max one hour long, because there's so many content creators you subscribe to who also put out essays, and there's only so much time in a day. Indeed, yeah. And, you know, I know some people don't have an issue they'll just like watch YouTube all day. That's fine. I mean, I usually just have YouTube on in the background, but I tend to watch stuff that's a bit more passive. That's not necessarily video essays these days. Uh, just cause it helps me relax more while I'm working. Uh, like for example, my favorite channel is red letter media. Uh, they have the show best of the worst where they'll just like make fun of movies and like old 80s and 90s instructional videos, like all that kind of stuff. And it's great. Like they're all hilarious. Um, and, you know, they don't take the YouTube game so seriously. Uh, but, you know, stuff like that is kind of stuff that I go into. And their videos are like an hour long, sometimes an hour and 30, but they're funny. And you can just have it on in the background without paying too much attention. Whereas something like a video essay feels like it demands my attention a bit more. Otherwise, it's just lost on me. Got a jet. Have a great day. Great rest of your day, everyone. Quesadilla, thank you very much for stopping by. Hope the rest of your day is great. I cut my ums and ahs out. Tande must go as well. Thank you very much for joining us, Tande. Uh, hope your meeting isn't awful. But yeah, ums and ahs. In fact, if you use Adobe Premiere, uh, they... Speaking of ums and ahs... They, there is a feature, because you can auto-transcribe text or dialogue into text with Adobe Premiere. And that's why my recent videos have had subtitles in it, because it's made it infinitely easier to make subtitles for it and to edit with it. But they have a nice little tool in Premiere Pro that 
will select all of the pauses and all of the filler words and automatically cut them out for you. And it is incredible as time savers go. And because I bullied you into including subtitles too. I know, like, I've always wanted to include subtitles, but yeah, it's been like, you know, when you go like between projects and everything, there's only so much spare time. And as anyone will attest who has made subtitles, it is a grueling job. But with the transcribe features, at least I have like a decent baseline of, uh, you know, the words that are on screen, the words that are being said, and it thankfully recognizes my accent. Um, although I will say, like, with this particular video I'm working on right now, because of all the Korean names and everything, uh, it doesn't get Korean names, which I'm not surprised at. Like, for example, the director of Stella Blade, um, his name is uh, Hyung Tae Kim, but every single time that I said his name, Transcribe thought that I said uh, Hyundai Kim which I feel might be a little bit racist. Red Letter Media, yeah, they're the best. I love those guys, they're very funny. Mike Stoklasa in particular, God, he's funny. In fact, well, I don't know if still he attended, but I saw you thing the other day of, um, What's his name from Baldur's Gate 3 in the uh, Rich Evans slob pose? That was great. <laughs> Welcome back, buddy. I don't work with Premiere Pro, but I saw people use it. Yeah, Premiere Pro has lots of faults, but I cannot fault it for the transcribe thing. That thing has been a godsend with me since I'm so terrible at flubbing my lines when it comes to reading off the teleprompter. And it was only one misheard word in the last video. It, yeah, you know, it still happens. I do double check my uh, subtitles before I try to post it, but you know, these things happen. And if anyone ever notices any faults with the subtitles or anything, please point it out because I can always edit it after it's been uploaded to YouTube. Uh, and yeah, I don't mind changing it at all. I'm saying it's, a, I know you're saying it's a good thing. You know, one word isn't too bad. All right, I think it's time for my break uh, and to finish off this tea real quick. You ever do that thing where like, you're just gonna polish off the rest of your drink and you don't realize actually how much is in there? That was that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so I'm going to take a little break just to stretch and whatnot. Uh, I still don't have a question of the day thing set up. So if anyone has a question of the day, uh, please share it. I will pin it to the chat as well. Um, but yeah, I'll be back in about five minutes. Enjoy some more Final Fantasy music from Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which is a s soundtrack of over 350 songs. So I picked two of them. Uh, but yeah, I'll be right back. Go get a drink in the meantime. Alright, I'm back. For some reason my music just stopped because of that. Oh wait, no, it's another track. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. My voice is getting a bit rough. Question of the day, if you were to bring a person with you on a free weekend city trip, who would you bring, and where would you go? Well, I guess my obvious answer would be my wife. Uh, where would I go? I don't know, the thing is when it comes to weekend trips, it's like, how much can you do in the weekend? I was like, I'd really like to visit Japan, for example. Uh, you know, despite me criticizing it, it does seem like a really nice place to visit. Uh, but I don't think you can get much done in a weekend. So, maybe New York? I've yet to go there, but it seems like a decent weekend place, you know? But, you know, I'm also not someone that tends to, like, move around a lot, so how much I could do during that time remains to be seen. 
I'm a disabled American and I'm adopted. There's a very real chance that my birth mother is a German citizen. I'm terrified to have to stay in the US. Do you think if I want, if I went to the German consulate, I could apply for political asylum in Germany? Uh, hard question now. It's not one that I can answer, but it would be good probably to contact the consulate and, you know, embassy, whatever you could try really that could offer you some kind of answers for that. Um, I imagine since like if you transfer guardianship over to another parent, the biological parent that you have in another country might not count towards that. Um, so yeah, I'd speak to him about that because that's quite a complicated issue there. And every, obviously every country has its differences in that respect. So yeah, sorry I can't give you more solid answer on that because I'm not really a legal expert on these things. I learned a lot about, you know, getting into the country when it comes to moving to the US since I'm a migrant in that respect. But yeah, to Germany, how did it say? I love a trip to Canada with my best friend, just not sure yet. I'd like to go to Canada too, actually. I have a friend that lives there. Maybe they can let me stay with them for a bit, but, you know, don't want to impose. But yeah, I wouldn't mind a trip to Montreal. Apparently that's a really nice place to visit. Although I'm sure many people from Montreal would immediately turn around and say, don't go to Montreal, it's a shithole. But I think a lot of people are like that when it comes to their own countries. Like, I always tell people, don't visit London. But if you're going to visit the UK, don't just visit London. Visit anywhere else in the UK. Well, not anywhere. But like, go to like Manchester or Birmingham or Liverpool, stuff like that. Just because London is like very touristy. And I always think that if you want to get like a more authentic taste of a country, you have to venture outside of its major cities. To be honest, the thought of traveling at all when without, even without a global pandemic just sounds too stressful anyways. I can't think of any place that wouldn't be a pain in the butt. Traveling, air travel is and always will be awful. Like, I cannot stand it. I mean, it's not too bad compared to like a long car drive, but yeah, it feels like airlines really go out of their way to make you uncomfortable these days. <laughs> like, even... Like, I moved to the US in 2016, um, and I last traveled on a plane in uh, 2022, or was it 2023? It was tw 2023, yeah. Um, no, wait, no, it wasn't. 20, November 2022. Um, and between that span of time, the leg space had gotten smaller, and you now have to pay to have checked luggage in there where that did not used to be the case not too long ago so you're gonna pay like fifty dollars just to be able to travel with a suitcase which is absurd because most people are traveling to other countries with a full suitcase it's a scam yes yeah, so i've heard that the bagels are good in montreal I don't mind giving them a try. Or maybe I try making them. I want to experience the hot springs. I'm not sure I'd want to do that. Just because I don't like getting into water with other people. It always grosses me out a little bit. Like I don't go into pools because of that reason. I prefer train. Train is good. Yeah, trains. I do like trains. Uh, I would do most of my travel to further afield in the UK on a train because the service was relatively inexpensive, it's quick and it's, you know, straightforward, you know exactly where you're going to. Like if I wanted to go from where I live to Manchester, it would be like 45 minute train ride, which is really nothing, and you just sit back and do whatever. Kind of want to go on one of those beautiful train trips in the Alps. UK trains relatively. I know that they're more expensive than they used to be, they're, but believe me, they're way cheaper than train travel in the US. 
they have skyrocketed in the past few years. I will say that. Traveling just isn't accessible or safe for disabled people like me. Yeah, that's true. It's, um, even though they've made changes to make it better, it's still not perfect by a long way off. Right, I was just thinking, how would people feel about playing a little bit of Jackbox? Because we got a decent amount of people here right now. It will give us something to do. Uh, how about it? Not sure which Jackbox though. Which would be fun. I'd love to. Wonderful. Uh, how about some Quiplash? Quiplash. Everyone likes Quiplash. Which one was Quiplash 3 in? Uh, party pack seven. Okay. Yeah, I've got party pack. Okay, there it is. I have pot. I have Jackbox on my. I have a few of the games on Steam, but I have one on the Epic Store, and that is the one that I need. Okay. All right, it's all updated. That's good. Okay, let me get this loaded up. <clears throat> I'd love to play it, but I'd also like to know your boundaries about not safe for work slash swear words. I mean, I don't really care about swear words, to be honest with you. Uh, just obviously don't go out of your way. Like, the only thing I'd prefer people to avoid is, you know, being horribly offensive towards certain people and everything. Unless it's James Corden, then you can go nuts. Because fuck that guy. Right, let me get my controller. Mm -hmm. There we go. Alright, let me just get things set up at first. Because I need to set it up so that I'm the VIP. And that's not just because I want to feel special. Alright, so Jackbox, just for those of you who don't know, with Jackbox, it's a party game thing. Um, where you can use your web browser or your phone to uh, play along. You don't need to download anything. I will give you the address which you can type into your browser and all you have to do is type in the room code which I will give you in the chat. Um, and try to use your YouTube name as your name in Jackbox just so we can identify you. Okay. So let me just open this up. Uh, All right. Oh, it allows us to reduce the amount of US centric content on that, which is good. So I know that some of you are from around the world. I will leave the profanity filter off, just in case. Well, we'll see how that goes. Okay. Let me set this up. Bear with me for a moment, please. Okay, and the rules of every game will be explained to you as it goes along as well. I'll let that play out. Okay. So yeah, this is Quiplash, and... Let me just get this open. Okay, yeah, you know, don't worry about being funny or anything like that. Just, uh, you know, go with the flow. Alright, so visit this website that I just posted in the chat, jackbox.tv. 
And when you get there, like I said, type in your username. Uh, and then you type in this room code, NXGQ. And the room code is NXGQ. There we go. Keep responses YouTube appropriate. Yes, please. Like I said, you can swear. Just, you know, keep it a little bit clean. Which I know sounds like a contradiction, because it kind of is. But yes, join in. Like I said, visit that link in the chat, and then type in your username and the room code NXGQ. And let me change the stream title. Okay, got some spaces free, join in folks. <clears throat> Excuse me. My wife would play with us usually, but unfortunately she's working right now. Oh no, Sam took the poop emoji, I wanted that. It's fine. I'll be the sad drip. You snooze, you lose, and you have snozzed and lost. Story of my life. Don't wait for me, I'm eating. Well, what you can do is, if you don't want to join in with the answers and everything, once the game starts up, if you join the room, you can join as an audience member, so you can vote on answers and stuff like that. So, yeah. Once it gets going, join the room, and then you can still participate in a different way. But we will get started there. I don't want to wait around for too long. Enter the room code I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Here we go. And here's the rules. I'm your host, Schmitty, and you're now all my best friends. <sighs> and remember, you still get to vote if you're in the audience. Type in that room code to join. Time for round one. I'm going to flash two prompts on your device. Nice. Type something ingenious that will stand up against another player's response. response. Then everyone will vote for their fave and one of you will get an ego boost. <laughs> You'll rake in the points based on the percentage of people who dig your response. Got it? Great. All right, here we go. Okay. Like I said, if you do want to join the audience, 
jetbox.tv and type in that room code at the top right. Why, my bestowed collection of blue cheese. Oh, nothing much, just your house burning down. Okay, now you gotta vote for it for other users. Ooh, someone forgot to vote, and the audience ends up saving it for Sam. Don't forget to vote, folks. There we go. Oh. Flawless victory. And now, what's your reflection doing when you turn your back? Here's the fun part. Pick your favorite quip. Hey. Oh. Bullshit. Fucking audience. That's a good sign that you're a terrible farmer. All right, choose your favorite. You ate all the corn of the cobs or no overalls. Someone's not voting. I liked it, Rowan. Can't be a farmer without your overalls. Let's see the next one. The most outrageous thing you can smuggle inside a baguette. A nest of baby snakes or a very long breadstick. Oh, super quick plush. I am so funny. Hello, Ron. Ronathan Swanson, how are you doing? Would you care to join the audience of Quiplash? Ooh, I'm winning. hard with the stream delay. It should say on your device, I think, how much time you have. I have fucked this up. God damn it. I've got to do two safety quips. This is the worst thing ever. Oh, the shame. 
prompt. The most embarrassing place to witness someone screaming, I want to speak to your manager. Police station after their arrest or sex they toy shop. <laughs> I haven't seen this version of Quiplash before, so it's exciting. I mean, it's basically the same as Quiplash and Quiplash 2, but you know, new questions. Sam takes it, 60-40. And next, you know your mechanic is ripping you off when they tell you this. And now, pick your favorite. I peed in a gasoline tank, or we need to redo your trunk shaft. Oh! I won with a safety quip. That feels so wrong. <laughs> Let's keep it, going. it wasn't bad though. A new toilet gadget nobody admits to using can actually blank. Change the game or make curry night a much safer experience. I know who the second one is. Yep. Batman vs. Shark Tornado, or Su Superman vs. Spider-Man. I don't know, those all sound awful to me. <laughs> I would pirate them. Toomey takes it, 80-20. Beat them in a dance battle or Twitter comments. Damn it. I mean, the safety quip is not bad, actually. The safety quip seemed better in this game. Trunk shaft will always cost you a couple couple hundred dollar dues in the hole. Uh, that there trunk shaft, you know, got to keep an eye out for it. We all know that Sharknado was no chance against a billionaire's collection of neat gadgets. True that. <laughs> Quit plash in a nutshell. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, three secrets this group, you, right here, are hiding from each other. Okay. I mean, we're not that familiar with each other, so... This feels like it's less designed to be a funny one and more like actual truths. Time's running out. <sighs> okay, okay.
Let's see. Follow these three survival tips if you're lost in the wild. Okay, choose your favorite. Know the direction by the sun. Moss grows on the north of trees. Follow water downstream. Start a fire. Boil. Start a fire. Boil water. One small coffee shop. Well, the one on the left is very serious and true. Oh. Super quick flash, midi. That's a that's a host, isn't it? Oh my god. Three secrets this group you right here are hiding from each other. Real name, real age, IB has status. I once snorted a line of mints. I can't read. I shot the sheriff. I hate Thriplash. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Thriplash, if I'm honest. Oh, just. Thank you, audience. <clears throat> don't go there, don't eat that, no, don't throw up there. Where the fuck are the cups? Who shit on the sofa? I hate being around you fucks. Oof. Just cleansed it. I do like the I hate being around you fucks line though. That's pretty good. We made it. Let's see the final scores. <sighs> Damn it. Congratulations, Sam. Well earned. You are a funny bloke. Bloke always sounds very unnatural coming from my mouth. <laughs> Alright. Uh, let us try... Another game. What, what else is good off this pack? Poop. Sam wins channel ownership down? Yeah, yeah, sure, why not? He can have it, yeah. I'm done with this. Okay. Uh... Is this? Yeah, this is audience. Devils in the details. Nah, that one needs people to be there in person, I believe. Champ Top is pretty good, I think. Oh no, then I'd have to make videos. Yeah, that's the worst part. Streaming is great. Streaming is fun. Making videos, fucking nightmare. Alright, which was the, uh... The one that's in the office. I, I think it's five. I must go have a fun day. Sam, thank you very much for stopping by. Greatly appreciate it. And congratulations on your kind of well-earned victory. Alright, so let me switch to another one. I think it's Jackbox 5. But there's this other very good jab box game uh which i just cannot remember the name of right now give me one moment please uh, yeah jab box five let me open that up okay I can taste the salt through the screen. Good. I will say, losing doesn't bother. Life is losing to, uh, you know, a genuinely, like, smart, clever answers, all that kind of stuff. I'm fine with that. It's when you lose to, like, someone that's going for, like, the low-hanging fruit, like, you know, the poop jokes and stuff like that. At that point, I end up getting a bit salty just because I'm like, ah, fuck you. I could have done that too. I don't think these are the games, but um, let's see. This 
Split the room is quite good. So we'll give that a go. It's not necessary. So this one, you don't have to be funny with. Like, you don't have to make jokes with it or anything. Uh, this is a what-if game where anything is possible. Create strange and divisive hypothetical situations. So yeah, don't worry about being the ha-ha person in this. It's interesting. You should have poop joked harder then. I mean, I could say that for most of my life. Okay, let me check. I guess require Twitch is a little bit redundant here. All right. So yeah, like I said, if you are someone that worries about having to be funny, don't worry about that. You can get by without. All right. Let me just... I'm going to switch the source for a second, just so I can jump in the room first. Only the reason why I jump in the room first is because the first person that joins uh, gets the control in and everything. And it's not that I don't trust any of you with control, but you know, this is a stream. Gots to be careful. Okay. 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 Okay, so if you want to join, once again... Go to jackbox.tv and type in the code OVDA. This is my first Solaris name. Well, thank you. Nice to have you here. Join the party. I'll post the link once again. Jackbox.tv. And once again, the code OVDA. What's well, uh, NATO phonetic? Oscar. Viol was it violent? What's V in the NATO phonetic? Oscar, Violet, Delta, Alpha. Not I don't know. Someone can tell me. Join the party. Okay. Let's give it one more minute, see if anyone wants to join. And once again, if you are someone that doesn't want to play, you can join after the game starts as an audience member and vote one moment and vote as an audience member victor that's it thank you ron i knew you'd know that oscar victor delta alpha although prenato alpha used to be apple <clears throat> I always forget what P is supposed to be. Papa, I believe. Join the party. Bokraj, welcome back. Hope you're rested. Alright. Shut up. Alright. 10 seconds, and we'll close it out. And like I said, if you want to join as an audience member, just type in that code once the game starts. Done eating now, love to play. I see you are here. Nice to have you here, Sumi. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's go. So yeah, pay attention to the rules here because it's quite different. Meow. Do not be startled. I am here to guide you as we explore the deepest recesses of your mind. You will build strange and complex worlds using only your imagination and your thumbs. A hypothetical situation missing one key part will be transmitted to your device like this one. Ads before online videos have been banished. In their place are 15 second videos of this. They are not skippable. Is life better? There are infinite possibilities you could write in to complete this scenario. Choose wisely, though, because everybody else will then answer yes or no. And you will earn more points if you split the room. Fitting name, huh? For those of you in the audience, you will be competing as one player. Your answers will be determined by a majority vote. Yes, even in a nebulous void, democracy is important. At the end of the game, the person who creates the most divisive dimensions will win. Got it? Good. Now let's begin. 
Alright, so remember, the goal is to be divisive. You reach for a life preserver, but it's turned into a pony, and your arms are now something else. Look, you get the point. Let's split the room. Fill in the blank to complete the scenario. Okay. Can't hear the one sec. Oh, you can't even open the settings. One second. Yeah, I boosted the volume. Hopefully that works. Hmm. Okay. That's my answer. Still waiting on answers from Ron and Sumi. This game likes to call people out. <laughs> Let me know if you have any stream quality issues, because it looks like my bitrate has dropped quite a bit. Uh, it's Jackbox 5. And now, Binge Pipe presents... How low can you go? Okay, get ready to answer, folks. You to drop it, you involuntarily do this. An attractive stranger you meet at the bar invites you to a dance club. Do you go? Just for context, I'm answering this under the hypothetical situation where I'm not a married man. Mm. Ooh. A perfect split. Or almost with the audience. Answer, the more bonus points you get. It's time for Dirty Thirty. You live in a world where people who turn thirty are I'll increase the volume again. Or face one year under house arrest. It's your last day as a twenty nine year old. Do you perform the task tomorrow? Hmm. That's a good one. Can't read it currently in this state? Okay. I'll try read it out as well. You live in a world where people who turn 30 are forced to get married or face one year under house arrest. It's your last day as a 29 year old. Do you perform the task tomorrow? Ooh. I thought that would be a bit more of a split. <clears throat> you have a child who is out of control. You've tried just about everything, but to no avail. The only option left is a radical parenting method. Punished <laughs> by this method. There's a 25% chance it works. Do you do it? Alright, I'll just reread that again. You have a child who is out of control. You've tried just about everything, but to no avail. The only option left is a radical parenting method. Punishment by snakes on a plane. There's a 25% chance it works. Do you do it? In all fairness, I'm being the same person I was in my early 20s. You know what? I've spoken to like 70-year-olds that say the same thing. <laughs> 
three four split very nice yeah you get points by being the most divisive as possible you are transported back to the moment right before you were conceived so that means yeah if you watch your parents perform the act you'll be born with the ability to do this you must watch every second though do you watch the <laughs> All right, I'll repeat again. You are transported back to the moment right before you were conceived. If you watch your parents perform the act, you'll be born with the ability to fly at walking speeds. Do you watch every second, though? Oh, wait, you must watch every second, though. Do you watch? So, do you want to fly? Albeit at a moderate speed. As you know, at least you ain't walking that way all the time. Damn it. That was mine. <sighs> I regret staying awake. How to train your conscience. You found a way to bring dragons to life. The procedure involves harvesting and painfully dissecting every last member of this species. None will be left. Do you do it? Hmm. <clears throat> okay. You found a way to bring dragons back to life. The procedure involves harvesting and painfully dissecting every last member of lizards. None will be left. Do you do it? I keep wanting to chime in with my thoughts on it, but I don't want to influence people's uh, choices on this one. I was saying no to. <laughs> you know, bringing back dragons would be really dangerous, you know? Feast your eyes on the Shutterbug. A stranger approaches you on the street and reveals that he has pictures of you doing this. He won't release them as long as you give him the underpants you're wearing right now. Do you do it? A stranger approaches you on the street and reveals that he has the pictures of you drunk. He won't release them as long as you give him the underpants that you're wearing right now. Do you do it? That's a fucking pervert. Difficult for me to say, I will say, because I've never been drunk, so I don't know how embarrassing it would be. I assume if it was pictures of me, it would just be a picture of me crying. Oof. 100% no, sue me, I'm sorry. <laughs> me too. Yeah, it's rare that you find someone that's never been drunk before. And not for weird religious reasons or anything. You buy a computer and discover there's a human mind trapped inside. That mind belongs to this person. Their consciousness oh. is taking up the entire CPU and you need this computer for school. Do you delete them? Someone's trying to get to me here. You buy a computer and discover there's a human mind trapped inside. That mind belongs to Chris Pratt. Their consciousness is taking up the entire CPU and you need this computer for school. Do you delete them? <laughs> That's it. Easy answer. <laughs> Decoy answer. Is that like, if you don't know how long? 5-2 split. Who would keep Chris Pratt? I didn't see. in a petty theft trial. The night before you testify, the suspect's brother threatens you. If you tell the jury the truth, he'll go to the papers with the terrible secret that you're this. <laughs> Do you testify honestly? All right, once again, you're a key witness in a petty theft trial. Petty theft trial. The night before you testify, the suspect's brother threatens you. If you tell the jury the truth, he'll go to the papers with the terrible secret that you're mean to dogs. Do you testify honestly? Uh, 
Hmm. I mean, I'm not mean to dogs. Really? Yo, that's all true. It's petty theft. Who gives a shit? Yeah, I wouldn't want someone to go to prison for a petty theft thing. I mean, fuck that. Could have just been. Oh my. Hmm. Okay. All right, I got mine. I'll see if the game has a uh, closed captions options once we're done with this. And we can probably fit in one other game after this one's over. I want to play that office game. It's hard to describe what it is, but it's really good. I just need to figure out which pack it's actually in. Sorry if my talk is distracting you, by the way. I'm a bad liar though, and you know, perjury. Well, how do I know that you're not lying by saying that you're a bad liar? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Curie. Time is a real concept, and it's running out. is fresh out of virgin so you have to uh -oh. something else you can offer up spelling bee champions or this what do you choose to sacrifice to calm an angry volcano oh boy uh <laughs> sorry about this what do you choose to calm an angry volcano spelling bee champions or youtubers <laughs> Damn it, I thought you would have gone for YouTubers. <laughs> I mean, I'd understand, you know. What do you choose to sacrifice to calm an angry volcano? Spelling bee champions, epic lasagna. I mean, the spelling bee champions are smug little assholes. Good split. I knew that was you, Sumi, since you were going on about- Oh, hey! There we go. Great minds think alike. Oh, you'll vote for that one, but not mine. YouTubers one. Now for something different. You've been asked to take part in your best friend's non-traditional wedding. They have two roles available. You can either wrestle the father of the bride, or you can do this. Which role do you choose in this bizarre wedding? <laughs> uh... Oh. Nothing is weirder than a garter toss, am I right? Good split. But you could not predict my actions. Have a dance battle with the mother in law. <laughs> well, 
Well, I would fight either. I don't know, it depends on who the father of the bride is. If it's Steve Martin from the movie Father of the Bride, I wouldn't do it that way. Steve Martin is a treasure. But if it was like some guy called Gary, I'm fucking him up. Toss a puppy instead of a bouquet. <laughs> That's my controller disconnecting. Yeah, I ain't tossing a puppy. Let's switch things up. You're customizing your smartwatch. You can pick between two features. One tells you what people near you are thinking. The other tells you this. Which smartwatch feature do you pick? Hmm. What plants near you are thinking? Boy, I love sunlight. And I love it when dogs don't pee on me. Ooh, nearly 50-50. And a correct prediction. Good job, Ron. You might have clinched this. How to steal money and resources from the rich. Well... Say that's an easy one. All right, let's see you won. Uh, run! Ah, oh, congratulations! Enjoy the cat licks. <laughs> Most likes to me. Oh, well done. All right, so we can do one more game. Uh, I gotta figure out which the um, office game. There's one where you're applying for a job. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? But yeah, I will close this for now, except my controller isn't working. Okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna go on a very quick break. Just do expel waste. You know what I mean. Uh, but yeah, I'll be right back. One second. And if while I'm out, if anyone knows what the game is I'm referring to with the uh, job interview thing, uh, we'll get that started too. Although Patently Stupid might be good. That's a pretty good one. I don't know. Okay. But yeah, give me a couple of minutes. It will be a long break. And I'll be right back. Oops. All right, so I'm back. I have the game ready. Um, let me just open it up. You've got to go, got work tomorrow. Sumi, thank you very much for stopping by. Always a pleasure. Uh, rest well, and I hope your work is good tomorrow. But we are going to start with Job Job. Thanks for the games. No problem. Uh, glad that you enjoyed it. Okay. Wheel of Enormous Proportions is pretty good, too. It's a trivia game, but I love trivia. Alright, let me just check the settings. No preventive filter, US and yep, so we'll have less US-centric stuff here. And this has subtitles, and that's good. Okay, so we'll have some extended timers on this as well, so you will have a bit more time to figure this out. Especially since Job Job requires a little bit more thinky stuff. Um, but yeah. Okay. Alright. So just let me open it up and then I will reveal the code to you. I love trivia. I do love trivia. I miss doing trivia on the server. We would do trivia nights, but unfortunately a lot of people happen to not like trivia on our server. So we spent... Me, the mods, and the admins, we would put together like a list of like 80 to 90 questions, but we'd end up getting like seven people turning up because a lot of people were just like, uh, uh, I don't like trivia because 
I might get things wrong. I was like, that's trivia for you. And besides, even when you get things wrong in trivia, you learn something in the process. That's the wonderful thing about it. All right, let me load this up. So, once again, go to jackbox.tv and the code is YHHW and I will open up the game now on stream okay Yeah, so go to jackbox.tv code YHHW. Your room code is YHHW. And once again, if you do want to play as an audience member instead, just wait until the game starts, then type the code into the uh, website. I'll give it about another minute. See if anyone else wants to. We've got three places open. And of course, you'll get all the rules and everything as it goes along. Is the game volume all right? Read the room code. My pleasure. Y -H -H -W. Oh yeah, I need to put my name in the thing. I'm going to be the... Poop emoji. Because poop is funny. Volume up a little. Okay, one second. Is that alright? Or a bit more? Bit more. Do you say GIF or GIF? I say Jeff. Okay. And bear in mind this will have subtitles as well, so it won't be as uh, difficult as the last one when it comes to it. Okay, we'll give it 10 more seconds, and then we shall start. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, if you want to be an audience member, just join right now, and you'll be able to vote. Welcome, potential hires. We're thrilled you applied for this exciting employment opportunity. If you haven't guessed, I'm the boss around here, but I like to think of myself more as a buddy. A boss buddy. Water? Someone will get that. <clears throat> tell you're all great candidates unfortunately there's a whole bunch of you and only one job it's incredibly stressful for me that's why i developed a revolutionary new hiring process word art you all at once and force you to judge each other Whew. i feel more relaxed already deborah clear my calendar it's time to get to know our candidates my first rule of management, always set clear expectations, and I expect us to be best friends, so let's get started. I'm gonna send some icebreaker questions to your device. Answer them any way you want, there are no rules, except this one rule. You gotta use at least five words, okay? Everyone knows the more you talk, the smarter you are. It's my first rule of management. I mean, that's how I got so far on YouTube. Okay, no. Get ready to type in your answers. And with this, bear in mind, you don't have to be funny with the uh, first response that you put in. That can come later on.
Okay, mine, uh, don't wait, no, I'm not done. Okay. Alright, I'm done. Waiting for Haley. You got 20 seconds ish. Can't believe AI replaced bosses. Can't you? Well, actually, no. Bosses would be the ones to have their jobs protected. But 10 seconds. Yeah, you can reuse words as well, bear that in mind. Here's when it gets interesting. This one's tough. Oh, this is tough. Pardon my silence. Feel like mine are terrible. Oh boy. 
Ron, Tumia, Ibiza, and Anubis. You got 10 seconds. No pressure. Okay. Get ready to vote, people. Uh, don't worry about it, Haley. It's just the first round, so, you know, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Guy Hard always goes to a bathroom hard to of himself. A ogre fantasy story, they make you all a doctorate immediately, like... I feel like I had a stroke reading that one. Anubis takes it. Ah. A rainbow bonus. What are you most passionate about? The yellow mountains that you can cover in fog. <laughs> Bathing in the heat with aliens suits you. Oof. Bathing in the heat with alien suits you. Hey, you grab words from the question. You can use just about any text you see on your device. That's true, yeah. How do you know you're too sick to come into work? Beach, I just know. Hey, it's me, the game. What happened to this player? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's actually three questions all together. Synergy. What is your approach to getting along with others? Just steal everything. Mop the floors of fast food places to be super hot. Oh, god damn it. Oh well. Congrats, Ron. I literally called out sick yesterday for mental health. I mean, that's a valid reason. Immediately, doctorate. Believe in pirates. Oh. Thank you. What motivates you to give a hundred and ten percent every day? Hundred and ten percent attitude. Believe in everyone. Believe in you. International buttering Christmas. Don't know what to vote for. That first one is so earnest. Oh. And the rainbow bonus, very nice. Where do you get your best ideas? Fast food places, attitude. Yeah, Elon Musk got the idea for uh, being a terrible human being while eating 20 chicken nuggets at McDonald's. Synergy. I'm not much for reading, but from what I skimmed, you guys did great. Let's see who's in the lead. Oops, excuse me. Oof, Ron by a hat.
Okay, just like before, say anything you want, but be descriptive. The more you write, the less time I have to spend alone with my thoughts. That's why I write essays. Okay, bear in mind, there's two questions here. Maintenance, the lights in my office are doing that buzzing thing again. Oh no, wait, there's a bee in my desk. Carry on. Okay. Cap, your time is up. All right, mine are done. Everyone else, you got 33 seconds. I'm loving this game. Yeah, this game's really good. Wow, I'm learning a lot from these, including things I legally shouldn't know. <sighs> Round two of questioning. This time, I want to know how you would handle some tough workplace scenarios. Remember, you can use any word you see on your device in your answer. Try grabbing a word from the question itself. If you really fall in love with a word, tap it a whole bunch and use it again and again. Okay, here we go. Uh, these are tough. God, that was tough. 
Ron, Tumia, oh, you done. Haley and Abisa, you got five seconds, huh? Game really took the corporate theme and ran. Yeah, they know what they're doing. <laughs> Hydrate yourself and piss poison out into the whole shit nasty. <laughs> Rush a cat through there. Oh, a drawer. Wow, that's like a perfect draw. Thanks to the audience member. It only required pointless misunderstanding. Pirates are hard to follow. <laughs> Quickly cover everyone in Capri Sun and disappear. <laughs> Hey, give me them funny points. The CEO asks you to say the company slogan in their new commercial. How do you respond? Take your goo and cover in it. I tell them I free the dentist to give me free gas. <laughs> Feel like I had a stroke reading that. Take your goo and cover in it, or I tell them I free the dentist to give me free gas. Ooh, another split. Ah, rainbow bonus. You accidentally broke the shared microwave by ripping the door off its hinges. What do you do now? To clear my conscience, you have to immediately apologize. Cuddling with a controller, uh, in courtroom bathroom. <laughs> oh boy. Well, if I'm not having a stroke, I feel like this is what a stroke kind of feels like. Rowan with the win. I give them a child they doesn't need so they can become smarter. I didn't answer, but it's no big deal. <laughs> the thing is with this game, you can get like some genius moments, but then you can get a moment where it's just like, I don't know, say whatever. A nice synergy bonus. Think, think, oh god. Follow leaves that follow pirates. I guess it would be fine to, hard to find an 80s theme amidst all the answers that were given. But I did really like that one too, Mia. That was really good. Sleep, also fight. Community howl. You ever worked at a place where, like, in the morning they, uh, you know, try to, like, rally everyone with stretches and shit? It's awful. To me, another win. I think we got one more round. Let's see who's my current favorite. Anubis running away with it. Actually, it's very narrow between Anubis and Rowan. Don't overthink it. Just put down whatever enters your mind. Unless you're thinking. 
talking about my landlord. My place has a lot of water damage. Okay, here we go. Oh, just one question this time. Kinda nice. So while I'm waiting, I'm just gonna very quickly get a drink. Uh, I'll keep the stream running, of course. One second. Okay, final round. Okay. I'm here to inform you that you've used half your time. All right, you got 65 seconds. Like when people are choosing my answers, were there any smileys? Yeah, there usually is. Usually like it includes the punctuation and all that kind of stuff. I'm pretty sure I've seen some. Like, you know, there were periods there, commas, all that kind of stuff. So I imagine Smiley should be there too. Uh, waiting for Ibiza. You got 20 seconds left, or thereabouts. There we go. Here we go. Time to vote. About me, I will sleep. I won't do handsome ogre fighting. I will give mental blocks by laughing gas. I won't solve love for life. Alright, get your votes in. Ooh, ooh. Since it's the last round, how about an even bigger score bonus? Haley narrow it narrowly takes it. I will get a selfie with goo space aliens. I won't playing sports near river and goo everyone. I will hydrate friends, steal money. I won't see you next year.
Alright. Oof. Ron Chan gets the rainbow bonus in the win. Well done. Oh boy. I will offer bear lotion. I won't milk a dang bear. I will jelly your butter onto bananas. I won't mop rented tortilla and disappear. I will always become smarter. I won't grow taller right now. So I will offer bear lotion. I won't milk a dang bear. I will always become smarter. I won't grow taller right, right, right now. I will jelly your butter onto bananas. I won't mop rented tortilla and disappear. Sounds like a Rick Astley song. It does, yeah. Oh. Milking a bear paid off. Or not milking a bear. I wish I was a baller. I wish I wasn't going taller. Let's see. <gasps> Took the victory at the last moment. Thank you. I deserve it. Ooh, 52,900 a year. Maybe I can finally rent a apartment that's more than 800 square feet. Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone. All well played. There were some really good answers there. I will say that. Yeah, one of mine was visiting the... Yeah, visiting the dentist to tell them that I love them so I could get laughing gas for life. You got the job, but is it really a reward? No, it's not, because I have to work in an office, and work in an office sounds like a hell to me. So, yeah. Depends on the bennies, though. Got some good benefits. Probably not. It might be one of those offices where their idea of a benefit is just like having a ping-pong table where they never have balls for it. But oh well. Job's a job. As my parents are wont to say. I don't know, on 52k, you'd be lucky to get a closet in the basement. That's true. I mean, if... No. I mean, if it was New York, I wouldn't be able to live anywhere. But I'm not in New York. You get a pizza party when we remembered that we offered it. Because we did it that one time, and then people keep asking about it. Growth intentions are super hot right now. Mmm, indeed. I have an office job, but I mostly work from home. Yeah, an office job isn't too bad if you get to work from home, but an office job where you have to go in all the time? Fuck that. No, that's awful. Yeah, work from home is the best. Work from home is great. It's been proven to be much better for employees and productivity, but a lot of businesses force people to go back to the workplace because they needed to justify their cost on rent and whatnot, even though, you know, might not be necessary at all. And there's been like a lot of companies that own these buildings that have lobbied government to like get people back in the workplace through bullshit studies. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I once had to fight my boss for a free lunch when she offered it and forgot. That's worth fighting your boss over. Like, if your boss wants to give you anything for free, fight that motherfucker. I had an office job, but I had to split that joint when I said they had to cold call people. Yeah, I've done cold calling in a job before. It is miserable. Thanks for the game, everyone. Well, it's fun. i got to head out right now. Have a great rest of your day. Anubris, thank you very much for stopping by. I hope to see you again. Enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, I'm going to get going too. Uh, let's play the outro music. Thank you very much for joining everyone today. I hope you had fun. hope we had some laughs, learned some new things about each other, and other people as well uh hope to see you next time like i said every tuesday 2 p.m edt join the discord if you haven't already it's in the description below this video uh and there you can get alerts for future streams and i should be doing another baking stream next week um we'll see what i end up doing 
Uh, I might do a thing where I make cookies and write people's names on it, members' names on the cookies, but we'll see. Uh, I'll let you know in advance. So. Once again, thank you very much for joining me. Much appreciated. Much love. And I will see you next time. Take care.